Hi, my name's Scott Davenport, and I would like to introduce you to high intensity training. I'd like to give you some resources so that you can um, familiar familiarize yourself with the with this style of training. Uh, first, I'd like for you to go online and check out www.arthurjonesexercise.com. My good friend John Turner runs this website. It's his website. Uh, his email is on the website. You can email him, and he'll get back to you. Any questions that you have, uh, John, he's great with getting back to people and answering any questions that they have. Um, I'm going to recommend that you go into the website and look up the Nautilus bulletins. There's Nautilus Bulletin 1 and Nautilus Bulletin 2. If you can read those two bulletins, you'll pretty much know everything there is to know about high intensity training. Uh, and there's even more there for you. Um, you can look into the Colorado experiment. That's something I highly recommend that you check out. And um, the number one proponent um, of high intensity training, I would say, is Dorian Yates. If you want to look up Dorian Yates, he was a six-time Mr. Olympia. He used high-intensity training. Um, I myself am a Dorian Yates nutrition-sponsored athlete, and um, you know, so I, I use all his products and recommend them. And I would say, if you want to learn form about an exercise, look up Dorian Yates. He has videos on how to perform uh, exercises properly, and I would recommend. You know that that be the resource you use is Dorian Yates videos he he makes online um, on how to properly perform different exercises if you don't know and uh, ArthurJonesExercise.com they have a certification program um, I'm certified through them the International Association of Resistance Trainers and um, you know if that if you want to take it that far I would recommend that to anybody. I think it's the best certification program out there. Um, Dorian Yates as well has one. So high intensity training is it, it's it's different than a lot of uh, types of training. But if you look at certain aspects of of your training, it's it starts to make sense. Um, first, you know, I'd like to cover a couple topics such as genetics. Everyone starts off with different genetics, and as we all know, and so um, everyone has different muscle fiber types. So some people are geared more towards strength sports, maybe uh, powerlifting, lifting heavy weights, football, uh, sprinting, and then other people are more geared towards long distance running um, or different types of endurance activities, and it's all based off of what types of genetics you were born with and there, there's nothing you could do to change that and a, a good example would be uh, most people that are in the NBA are like seven feet tall there's nothing you could do to change that right you can't make yourself taller or shorter by training and so that's something to acknowledge with your um, with your training is that you're born with whatever genetics that you're born with and there's nothing you could do to change that um, Everyone is born with a different number of fat cells on their body. Some people have a higher percentage of fat cells. Some people less. Uh, some people are naturally leaner. Some people are naturally heavier. But you can um, shrink the size of your fat cells. So you can get leaner, uh, you know, by training. And you can build muscle, but you can't change the type of muscle that you have and you can't lengthen the muscles that you have. And, the, and your muscles are limited by their length. If you ever notice somebody with extremely large forearms or extremely large calves, those are simple examples, you'll also notice that their, for example, forearm muscle, if someone has extremely large forearms, their forearm will actually, it, it, will, go, it will start here and go all the way here. If they have... You know, find the person who has the biggest forearms you've ever met and look at how long the muscle belly is and how short the tendons are. Your muscle bellies 
uh, the length of them determine how large your muscles can get. Also, um, the, the, the tendons, the longer the tendons, the smaller your muscles can get. And some people, they think that size doesn't matter for, for strength, but if someone has a uh, white muscle fiber type, which is geared towards more power, they'll be able to lift more weight, even if their muscles are smaller than someone with larger muscles, if they have more endurance type of muscle fiber type. But in either case, if you make the muscle bigger and stronger, it, it will be stronger. So a bigger muscle is stronger, but that's not always comparable because people have different muscle fiber types. Also, other factors to consider are leverage. Um, if you have really long, if you have really long limbs, you're moving a weight a greater distance, and you're working with um, more challenges in terms of leverage. So, um, gauging yourself against somebody else is difficult to do uh, because of those factors. But if you always compare yourself with yourself, if you're getting stronger, you are improving. So you, you can measure yourself and compete with yourself. And that's, uh, that's true. You know, so I would recommend, you know, don't compare yourself to other people, but compare yourself with yourself and compete against yourself. And, you know, you can become the best uh, possible version of yourself. You can build maximum muscle for yourself and get as lean as you want to. Um, and, uh, you know, those are things you can do with training, proper, proper training. You can build, um, the maximum amount of muscle for your body. Um, and you can also minimize body fat It's something a lot of people don't realize is that you can, you can work out three times a day. You can do cardiovascular exercise uh, all day long and lose all your body fat. So something I like to say is, you know, depending on the lifestyle that you like to live, um, if you're extremely overweight, it really is a choice. Um, because you can lose that weight. Anybody can, if you have ever seen the biggest loser, they'll work out like eight hours a day and you can do that. If you really want to lose weight, anybody can train and sweat and lose all their body fat. Um, you know, not all of it, obviously, but you can you can minimize it and uh, get your body fat levels to as low as you want through hard training. And um, if that's your goal, I would say get outside and start moving, start running, start bicycling, start doing being coming more active. And also with that is you have to balance your your calories. So. Um, losing weight, it, it comes down to eating less calories than you're, you're burning off. And metabolism is a factor too. The, the higher your, the more muscle you have, the more calories you burn through activity. So it benefits you to have as mo much muscle mass as possible. Um, if your goal is to lose body fat. So it's a double edged sword. You know, it's better to have more muscle to lose fat. Um, each pound of muscle burns so many calories per hour doing nothing. Um, and it, it makes you burn more calories during exercise. But if you do want to lose body fat, you have to burn more calories than you consume. So if you eat a lot of, uh, pizza and and cheeseburgers and drink a lot of alcohol and eat fast food and candy bars and stuff you're not it's going to be really difficult you're going to have to burn a lot of calories to lose weight but you actually could still lose weight eating that way you just have to burn more calories than you consume so it's very simple it's a lot more simple than a lot of people make it out to be um when people eat chicken breasts and broccoli and all these really uh strict diets it's because it's just really low calories. That's what it comes down to is you're consuming very low calories when you eat low fat foods or low carbohydrate foods. Uh, a lot of people are into high protein diets. Well, it's hard to eat a lot of calories of protein. So if you just eat a high protein diet with low carbs and low fat, you're going to eat a lot less calories. Makes sense? It's pretty simple. 
So I just wanted to uh, get you thinking about these things and realize, you know, empower you as a person and um, help you to realize that it's your choice. You know, the condition that you're in, it's by your own choice. So I want to empower you and make you realize that, that your fitness level is all because of the lifestyle that you choose to live. And you can change that if you decide to. If you want to get lean, get outside. We'll start waking up early. Go train before you even eat. You know, train on your lunch break. Train after work. Train, train, train all the time. Um, and everything, you know, the way the human body works, everything is uh, based off of movement. And um, what we're constantly dealing with is gravity. You know, when you when you go running it challenges your body because your body weighs so much and gravity is, you know, forcing your body weight towards the middle of earth, right? Um, whatever your body weight is. So, you know, I'm 230 pounds. So my body's 230 pounds straight downwards. When I go running, I am moving 230 pounds of, of mass, right? And that requires so much energy to do that. And so that burns calories and that's what cardiovascular exercise is, but you're really limiting when you do like say running, for example, or bicycling or um, any kind of traditional exercise. If you think about it, you're really limiting the range of motion of the exercise running um, is not very, it's not a very, there's not much range of motion involved as compared to say a squat, for example. When you go running, it's a very short range of motion, but you're doing a lot of repetitions. So um, in terms of building your muscles or exercising your muscles to the maximum, what you want to do, um, and you know, this is up to debate. I'm not saying this is like gospel truth or anything, but if you think about it, you know, it makes sense. If I was to do a full squatting motion, the range of motion is much greater than running, right? So if I were to stand there and just do nonstop continuous squats, I'm getting a greater range of motion and uh, working out my those muscles better. And now if you want to increase the intensity, right? If you go from running to squatting, you just increase the intensity because you increase the range of motion. Does that make sense? Now if you want to increase the intensity even more, put a barbell on your back, right? And squat all the way down, squat all the way up. The more weight on your back, the more intense the exercise. Make sense? Should make sense. Um, now, the way that that your muscles work is your muscles, everybody knows for the most part that you break down your muscles, tear them apart, and then they rebuild, and that's how you get stronger. So it's a process of adaptation and progression. So what you want to do is you want to challenge your muscles to adapt and become stronger. And the best way, according to high intensity training, um, which makes the most sense to me, is to take your muscle to absolute failure so that it has to adapt for the next time. And what that means is if you can lift in the squat 100 pounds for 10 repetitions, force yourself to do 11 or 12, and then your body adapts to make that the norm. You know, and then you can do 13 or 14. So it's pretty simple. Um, but for for gaining strength, it comes down to those few repetitions rather than overall workload, doing tons of sets. The progression doesn't really make sense when you start doing four or five sets of exercise of 10 to 12 repetitions. It's kind of harder to gauge um, where you're increasing in strength. But it's very simple if you consider doing squats 100 pounds for 10 reps and then doing 12 reps you're obviously becoming stronger and so if you look at exercise it's a negative factor because you have to recover from it when you're doing this strength training um and so you want to minimize it you know it if if it was positive that more is better and I'm talking about strength training. I'm not talking about fat burning. Fat burning, more is better. You can burn as much as you want. It's your heart. Your heart burns fat. So if you increase your heart rate, you burn more fat. Um, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about building muscle. And so breaking down muscle tissue so that it has to repair 
and adapt and grow and get stronger. Um, if it was, if more was better then 24 hours a day of, of training would be the best. Right. And that you, that would kill you. You'd actually die if you tried to break down your muscles, um, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, it would kill you. Um, so that we know that that extreme is, is not what you want to go for. So where do you find the correct amount of exercise? Well, everyone can tolerate uh, different levels, just like people have different skin complexions. Um, some people can stay in the sun 12 hours a day and have a really high tolerance of exercise. Some people have fair complexions and they can't tolerate much at all. Um, you, you know, it's the same with exercise. Some people can tolerate great amounts of exercise. Some people can't tolerate very much at all. But really, uh, you want to minimize it as much as possible. So in high intensity training, you want to do one set to absolute failure. And that's going to maximize your muscle gains. Um, and at the same time, if you do your whole body and train it all at once, if you go from muscle group to muscle group, uh, for example, if you did your legs first, then your back, then your shoulders, then your chest, then your arms, then your abs. If you trained at maximum intensity in a circuit type of fashion and went to failure on every exercise, you'd actually get a really good cardiovascular workout as well. And cardiovascular is based off of your heart rate being elevated. So if your heart rate goes from 60 beats per minute to 160 beats per minute uh that's elevating your your cardiovascular uh, that's working out your cardiovascular system your body doesn't know if you're running or you're swimming or whatever you're doing i use a fitbit i highly recommend these um i have a fitbit that i use to measure my heart rate and i used to use a um polar uh with the chest strap but i like to just do it off my wrist now but um, I've gotten my heart rate up to like 225 beats per minute or possibly more uh, lifting weights, doing squats and leg presses and deadlifts heavy. And um, that's actually, you, you know, it's, it's dangerous. You don't want to go that high really because your, your heart starts to uh, fibrillate. And um, what that means is in, rather than pumping uh, and pumping your blood properly, it starts to pulse because uh, the the beats get to be too high so that's why they say uh 225 minus your age is the maximum heart rate that you really want to go to uh or it gets dangerous so um my point is though that through weight training you could actually um develop your your cardiovascular conditioning to its maximum to being in the maximum physical fitness possible uh, cause you can elevate your heart rate and, and you'll see if you try it, your heart rate will get really high and you'll actually, um, it's really difficult cardiovascular training when you train that way. Um, also another factor I want you to consider is the fact that it, say you, you know, you're doing a stretching exercise, you want to develop flexibility. So you, everyone knows the stand there, put your feet straight and touch your toes, right? And get as low as you can. Well, now imagine if you got on the edge of, you know, a cliff and you put your legs straight and you took a heavy weight on a rope or whatever, and you hung that over while you're doing the stretch, you hung that over that cliff, you, the resistance would cause you to stretch much further. So with all your exercises, you could actually develop maximum flexibility if you use a proper maximum range of motion when you're doing that. Um, exercise so consider that you know you can develop flexibility through strength training a lot of people think it, it makes you muscle bound but if you think about it it should actually make you more flexible um, if you do it properly you use full range of motion and uh, if you do it in a circuit type of fashion it'll develop your your um, cardiovascular fitness to the maximum as well and also if you go to failure on each set you'll develop your strength to the maximum possible as well. So you can develop maximum strength, cardiovascular fitness, and flexibility all through high intensity training. And that's why I wanted to introduce it to you. And I recommend that you research it. 
yourself look into this don't take my word for it but i did want to introduce it to you and i wanted to to just cover a, a couple other brief topics just to get the wheels turning in your mind and get you thinking about these things first um rotational form of exercise so the way that people train is all completely based off of what we have to use. So, for example, we have barbells and dumbbells. And there's machines as well. But barbells and dumbbells have become the golden standard for strength training. Most people like to use running, bicycling, th this type of stuff for for cardiovascular fitness and then like say yoga or something for their flexibility um but if you consider the human body rather than the equipment that we're working with most of your muscles work in a rotating fashion so i'm gonna i'm gonna use an example here your biceps When you do bicep curls, for, for example, there's an arc. There's a rotation, right? If you're standing sideways looking at someone doing curls, there's a rotating mo motion that causes your, your bicep to contract, right? Um, full contraction. Also, there's supination and pronation. So... It's very complex. Your bicep is very complex. Um, when you um, flex it or when you stretch it, the full range of motion, there's factors of uh, we're working with gravity. So when you're, say you're doing a barbell curl and the, the, the barbell is 100 pounds, 100 pounds of resistance is constantly pushing down towards the earth because of gravity. But if you look at your bicep, if your bicep's in the fully extended position, right, that resistance would actually have to be going towards your body to be challenging the biceps. So in the beginning of a curl, you're not really challenging your biceps at all. And now in the halfway point, that's the most difficult because of leverage factors. That's where the exercise there's a sticking point on most exercises because that's where it becomes the most difficult because of leverage factors and uh, that's where you get stuck or you have to cheat past that right and then the resistance comes off again like when you come to the top of a curl because there's no re the resistance is downward but you would need resistance pulling against your palm to be working your bicep properly so this is a rotational form of exercise and I'm bringing this up because Arthur Jones, the creator of high intensity training, he actually developed Nautilus equipment and he, this equipment actually, it supplies you with rotational form of exercise, which covers what I just uh, spoke about direct form of exercise, which means the exercise is directly working your bicep uh, at all times, not going from your bicep to your forearms to your shoulders as in a barbell curl would or, or your lower back or whatever muscles you're using. Instead, it's directly working that muscle group. Automatically variable resistance, which means as your muscle gets stronger, when you're in a fully contracted position, that's the strongest your muscle is in that position. So the weight is actually heavier. You can do uh, certain techniques like force repetitions um, and, and pulling against the barbell or something. You can do that with a workout partner if they understand uh, these things. They can supply those those uh, that type of resistance to a degree. Um, so automatically variable resistance, balanced resistance, resistance in the stretch position, which would be um, like we're talking about the beginning of a barbell curl. Uh, ideally, like say if you did uh, dumbbell curls at the at the end of the motion, you actually want to uh, 
fully pronate your hand and that's a full maximum stretch of your bicep the fully contracted position of your bicep is actually fully supinated it's actually this position too if you, i put my hand behind my head and fully supinate and flex that's the fully contracted position of a bicep the the most contracted it can be and it's that's where your biceps the strongest so how do you work out your biceps in that position well arthur jones created a machine that you know was up here that's where you did the exercise um negative work pot work potential uh, i'm gonna go over this really quick in every exercise you're lifting holding and lowering so for example um if i'm in the bottom position in a squat i lift the weight up i hold it at the top and then i lower it typically you're 40 percent stronger like if you can lift 100 pounds then you can lift you know 100 or, or you can hold at the top of that position 140 pounds and you can lower 180 pounds so there's actually more potential um than than people realize like a lot of people think how much can i lift well how much can you lift go to failure on that how much can you hold go to failure on that how much can you lower go to failure on that uh, so nautilus equipment covers all those uh goes goes to failure on lifting holding and lowering uh weight which you can do with a partner as well um using forced repetitions and negatives um but uh something to think about okay so there's positive uh static and negative strength so and and obviously you understand that you can hold more than you can lift and you can lower more than you hold right makes sense positive work could potential pre-stretch so pre-stretch is basically um you're stronger if you go into a full range of motion. So if I go into a squat, uh, if you go all the way to the bottom, you actually fully stretch it. And, uh, and there's like a bounding effect out of the bottom where you um, are stronger as opposed to if you stop somewhere uh, before that, before that fully stretched position. Resistance that is provided in the finishing position of full contraction of the movement. I already covered that, and that, that applies to every type of exercise. You need that varied resistance. And, um, and you, you, you know, yeah, it, it's hard sometimes to get uh, the proper resistance in certain exercises, like a, like a barbell curl, for example. How do you get that maximum uh, resistance in, in the fully contracted position? Because the resistance isn't, it's not proper. So something to, to consider, something to think about. Think about gravity as a factor. Think about how your muscles work. Look at your muscles, examine them. Um, and unrestricted speed of movement. So an example would be if I lift my phone, right? It's really lightweight. I'm lifting it with my muscles, right? But if I if I throw it up, I can actually let go of it and keep going because of momentum or inertia. Um, and that's no longer my muscle lifting the weight. It's just uh, momentum. I just got it to such a speed that I can actually let go and the, and the weight will continue without... Um, using my muscles to lift it so you have to limit the speed of which you lift weights not for performance for performance you want to lift as fast as possible but for working the muscles you don't want to lift as fast as possible or else you're say you're doing a military press you're using your muscles for a very brief amount of time and then then momentum is lifting the weight the rest of the way right does that make sense it's like throwing this phone up right same thing if you're doing Olympic weightlifting, you're not uh, fully developing your your muscles of your shoulders. Although you know you are going to develop your 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 traps and stuff to a great degree. You know, holding that weight over your head, or uh, or you're using your hips to explode it out of that position. But if we're talking about the deltoid muscle, you don't want to 
um, use momentum to properly work it through its full range of motion and take it to failure and develop that muscle, that muscle group. So you don't want to do those fast explosive movements. Um, for performance, you do. Like I said, athletic performance, you want to go and be explosive and and perform as, as, as fast as possible. But if you look at the muscle and working it to the maximum, uh, you're, you're working in very limited areas uh, when you do that. You, you're working for like half a second in one little position, and the rest is just momentum, lifting the weight up. So to maximally develop your, uh, your muscles, you want to um, uh, limit the speed of the motion. But with uh, Nautilus equipment, you can maximize that speed because it's limited by the equipment. Um, however, if you do use heavier weights, you can push uh, harder and, and use a maximum speed of motion. And it's not going to be that fast because the weight's so, so much you're only going to be able to move it so quickly. So a lot of times when you use really heavy weights, you can just do the first couple repetitions a little bit slower, and then you can go as fast as possible. And it's still going to be rather slow um, for those last repetitions. So you are using your muscles through a full range of motion throughout the whole entire exercise. So these are just some things I wanted you to consider, to introduce you to if you weren't familiar with them. Um, check out ArthurJonesExercise.com, and I'm going to share some videos that are going to go along with this of some people that I trained in the past, two complete opposites in terms of genetics. I have one friend, um, Ash McNamara. He's uh, much leaner. He's a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt, and he has a much more endurance body type. He's not built for lifting great amounts of weight, but he has incredible endurance. So he can do a, a amazing amount of repetitions. He has that type of body type. And then my, my other friend, Eric, he's a wrestler, um, MMA fighter, really big, strong guy. And he can lift a lot of weight. He's extremely strong, but not quite as much endurance as my friend Ash. So totally different um, body types genetically, but they can both push themselves to the maximum intensity, and they do in these videos that I'm going to share. Um, and they're developing themselves to their to their maximum and uh, improving themselves to their best. And they both, even though one is doing more reps with a lighter weight and the other one is lifting more weight for less reps, they're both reaching maximum intensity. And that's what I'm trying to get you know, to inspire you to do as well is to go for that maximum intensity. If we have a gauge of zero to a hundred, you can say whether you gave a hundred percent or not. Um, and that's what high intensity training is all about. It's being able to check that off. It doesn't really matter how much weight you lifted. It doesn't really matter, you know, how much more the other guy lifted or you lifted than them. It's, did you push yourself to a hundred percent of your own capabilities? That's what it's all about. Each and every workout, going to that and get a journal. Get get yourself a notepad, and at the end of your workouts, write down how you know did I push myself to seventy percent, eighty percent, ninety, or a hundred percent? And we're looking for that hundred percent intensity level. Um, so get yourself a notepad. Get yourself a pen. Get yourself a Fitbit. I would recommend. And check out ArthurJonesExercise.com as well as Dorian Yates Nutrition. Um, actually, let me go ahead and I'll give you my code. For anybody out there, you can use my code and you get 30% off of all of their products. I just want to put that out there because I believe in, in all of their products. And... Um, you know, recommend that you use them. I recommend that everybody use uh, Dorian Yates Nutrition products. Uh, I can't find the code. I think it's DY104, I believe is what it is. But, uh, you know, you can just reach out to me, comment on this video, let me know what you think. Sorry that I uh, dragged it out so long, but uh, let me know what you think about this and um, hit me up. I'll get you that code. And uh, if you'd like to, discuss this stuff more. I, I love talking about it. So 
uh, hit me up and watch the videos my buddies that these are great examples of of two guys both reaching 100 percent intensity in their training All right, that's the warm up. That's the warm up. Now the work begins. This is where the set starts right here. You got through the warm up. Now you're starting to work out. Good. Good. Dig deep on this one, Ash. Everything you got. This is the most important part of the workout right here. This sets the tone. This sets the tone. Come on. The hardest you've ever gone in your life, Ash. You got this. You got this. Good. Breathe. Perfect form. Perfect form. Come on, Ash. Mental toughness right here. Right here. Harder than you've ever gone. Come on. You committed to this. Good. Good. I like the noise. Come on. Come on, Ash. Dig deep. Speed the movement up a little bit. A little bit. Okay, Ash? Speed the movement up. You got this. You got this. Come on. Good. Good. Drive it. Good. Come on, Ash. Come on. Come on. Keep going. Look up. Look up. Come on. Breathe. Breathe. Oh. Come on, Ash. Come on. Come on. You got this. You got this. Nice. Good. Control. Up. 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 Come on. Good. Breathe, Ash. Breathe. Up. 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 Come on. Come on. Come on. Breathe. 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 Come on. Come on. We're getting your strength. We're getting your strength. Come on, Ash. Come on. Place you never been. This is a place you never been. Come on, come on. This is where you want to be. This is where you want to be. This is where it matters. This is where it matters. Come on. Good. Control, 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 control. Come on. Breathe. 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 Good. Come on. Control it slow. Control it slow. Okay. Control it slow. Uh, 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 one more. One more. Uh, 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 one more. One uh, more, Ash. One more. Uh, 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 come on. You got more. You got more in you. I can feel it. Come on, Ash. Get strong, get strong. Up, up. Control that bar. Control that bar on your back. 
Embrace the pain. Embrace the pain. Embrace the pain. Embrace it. Embrace it. Good. 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 Breathe. Breathe. Lose your mind. Lose your mind here. You're going to another place. You're going to another place. Good. Good. Come on. Focus. Good. Straight through the leg extension. Come on. Come on. Fast. Burn. Get to that burn. Come on, Ash. Come on. Come on. Remember I told you he's going to burn? Come on. Nice. Good, Ash. Good. 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 You got more than you know, Ash. You're stronger than you think. Trust me. You have more than you know. Come on. Come on. Good job. I know it burns. I know it burns. Visualize the lactic acid leaving. Visualize. Visualize. Visualize yourself getting stronger. You're getting stronger. Up. You're getting stronger. Up and hold. Up and hold. Slowly lower. Slowly lower. Come on. Up and hold. Up and hold, Ash. Come on. Come on. Up and hold. Come on. Hold it. Hold it. This next one, I want you to stop it. Come on. Up. Stop it. Good. See? You're stronger than you think. Come on. Come on. Stop it. Resist it, Ash. Come on. Slower. Come on. Good job. Slower. Good. Up. Good. Come on, come on. Up. You're recovering, see? You got more than you think. You got more there than you think. Come on, come on. Come on, Ash. You said you're gonna do it. Harder than you ever pushed yourself. Harder than you ever pushed yourself. Come on, lift, lift. Come on. Come on. Come on, up. You're setting the tone right here. Come on, up. Lift, lift. Come on, lift it. Lift it and hold it. Hold that thing. Come on. Hold it up. Up, 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 up. That's light. Come on. Hold it, hold it, come on, lift it up. Up and hold, up and hold, Ash, come on. Keep going. Don't give up on me. Don't give up, Ash. Up and hold, up and hold, come on. Don't give those legs a rest. Come on, up. Up and hold it and flex it as hard as you can. Come on. Flex it. Get that flex. Come on. Up right now. Up, 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 up. Up, 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 up. Up. Now up. Up. Come on. Up. Come on, Ash. Up. Up and hold. Up and hold. Up and hold. Come on. 
10 seconds. Hold it for 10 seconds. 10 seconds and you're done. Hold it for 10 seconds and you're done. Come on. Three seconds. Two. One. Done. Good. Hey. Stand up. Stand up. He's already there, dude. He just took the fast pass, dude, to the zone. Get him, get him. Girl, you're good. Go, 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 go. Hey! Go squats, go squats. What do we got, like 335 on there? Yep. Run, 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 run. Keep going, keep going. Nice. That was good form, bro. Rest, lay down. <laughs> 